All right, guys, so today we'll be discussing about uh, backtesting a pullback strategy. So this strategy ideally goes along with the trend and it picks up some good moves here, as you can see in the SPY, QQQ, performed very well there. But there are places where it didn't perform well as well. So for example, in PayPal, it didn't perform that great. Facebook, it performed pretty decently. JP Morgan, Procter Gamble, Visa, Baba, Microsoft, and the list just goes on. So the entire code of the strategy is available in the description box. So you can click on that to download it. Let's see the criteria of this pullback strategy. So the first criteria is that we are only going long. So if you want to do a short strategy, then I think this might not be uh, the strategy for you, but you can actually tweak the codes to try out the short side as well. But I would um, I would recommend that you do it kind of in a different perspective, but that I'll leave it to you on how to create the short strategy. Uh, the second thing is that we only pick stocks which are in an uptrend. So we need to satisfy the uptrending condition. So, so that's very crucial. So when the market is like going in an uptrend and when it pulls back, that's when we are thinking about the entry. So let's discuss what the entry conditions are. So the first condition is the stock is greater than 200 day moving average. So what this helps us with is that it really helps us pick out the healthy stocks. So any stocks that's below the 200 day moving average, I'm not saying it's unhealthy stock, but at least we have some technical advantage that it's kind of healthy. It's going above the 200 day moving average. Everybody around the world, including the financial news channels report about the 200 day moving average. So any stocks that's about the 200 day moving average. So that's our first entry condition. So the stock has to trade above the 200 day moving average. And next condition is our pullback condition. So when the stock pulls back, we need to uh, enter. So what do you think that should be? So for me, I'm picking a 50 day moving average. So you can actually do 20 or 10 or 30. It's up to you, but I want much more of a deeper pullback. So then I have at least some kind of an upside potential to aim for. So if I go like just 10 day MA, then the chances for an upside potential may not be that high because pullback is kind of small. So a 50 day moving average gives me a larger pullback and a higher upper potential uh, for me. So obviously you can uh, mess around with these conditions, but ideally we're looking for the 200 day moving average. The stock has to trade above the 200 day moving average. And the second condition being the stock has to be below the 50 day moving average. So that's pretty much the entry condition. So let me just go through the chart here. So I'm just going to minimize this one and just, I'm going to show the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. The so 50 day moving average is the blue line and the yellow line is a 200 day moving average. So if I zoom into this right here, so the market is closed below the 50 day moving average. So where we went long and it's also above the 200 day moving average. So that's when we went long. And in this case, we have actually stopped out. So I'll come into our exit condition in a bit. So let's go through a few more examples. So here again, it was below the 50 day moving average. So we entered somewhere there at 106 and then we exited all the way uh, at 140. So that's a really good example of a big return. So again, if you go another one here, we went long there and then we closed our position there. So there are multiple situations where we enter here. Again, we've gone long there. Uh, it's below the 50 day moving average. It's above the 200 day moving average. And then we close there. So you can see the market has gone down below the 200 day moving average. Still, we haven't exited the condition. So our criteria of exit is not based on the moving average. Our criteria of exit is based on something else. So now let's discuss our exit condition. So our first exit condition is uh, pretty simple. Uh, it's got nothing powerful in it or something. It's just a simple stop loss and a take profit target. So we've gone at a take profit at 30% and stop loss at 10%. It's as simple as that. So we're actually getting our risk reward ratio of three to one, and we're actually giving enough space for the uh, stock to go. So I can easily change the stop loss to like 1% or 2% or 3%, but then that doesn't give me the room for it to have some minor corrections. But on the other hand, if I put a stop loss at like 10%, then even if the stock goes for a minor correction downside, it's nothing to worry about uh, because we've got enough space and the profit target of 30% uh, gives me a good enough risk reward ratio. So if I change things like around the stop loss target to make it like 2%, uh, then the take profit has to be corrected from that extent as well. So I'm just giving you a simple basic example here at a three is to one thirty percent ten percent Again, you can tweak this, uh, try to play around with these values. 
The best way to see the result of this is by looking into the list of trade section. So if I'm going to go to the list of trade section here, so this is the uh, last trade that we did. So this is the long here. So, so far it hasn't gone below 10%, so the position has not been closed. On November 2nd, we actually ended a trade, um, and that's this one here, and we stopped out at 10% here. Uh, so that's the close here. Now let's see a profitable one here, and that was on here. So that's, we ended long there on 2019-0802-109.74, and we exited on 2020 uh, at 142.67. So that's one here all the way to here. So that we exited at 30%. So as you can see here, there is sometimes 30.01, 10% and sometimes 10.01. So those are like the um, slippage. So for instance, once the market opens as a gap, you might not be able to exit at the exact 10%. So you might have to exit at a different value. So you can expect those kind of things. So it, it helps you in one side, but also can be a uh, negative side as well, because sometimes you might make a 30.01 and sometimes you can lose a 0 0.01 here as well. So there should be a margin for error on that one as well. So. Uh, that's pretty much it for the risk management that 10 is to 10% uh, and 30% uh, stop loss and take profit respectively. So if I can go into the performance summary, um, if I can look at the, the percentage profitable is 44%, uh, which we're not surprised because we are trying to be in a, a trend following kind of an approach, you know, you're targeting threes to one risk rewards, so you're not trying to target a high amount of percentage profitable. But as you can see, the average win to average average loss kind of a thing, you know, it will always be in that range of three threes to one. When you go into the um, overview, so if I can go into the settings, so you can see it's $100,000, 100% equity. So now, even if I change this to uh, 10,000, the value doesn't change much. So even if I make it like 1 million, the percentage is almost the same. So never look at the final value of this, always look at the percentage return. So the percentage returns gives you the accurate value. So I had this question from one of our clients who asked about this value. So always never um, put your focus on the value, whether it's 1 billion here, whether it's 10,000 or 5,000 or 20,000, the percentage is all what we're looking at. But also be careful not to change this to contracts because what happens in, when you put contracts is that the contract is so small, so, and it's been compared to a 10 million. So even if you make, let's say, a 100% return or a 50% return or a 20% return, it's compared to that 1 million. So when you say, $100 to $100,000, that's like 1% of that. So it can only show 1% return. So never put one contracts because comparison is done with the initial capital. So always go with 100% equity. And then if you want to play around with your capital, you can play around it there. You can change it to 10,000 or 100,000 or whatever that suits your convenience. But as always, uh, make sure you look at the percentage numbers. Now let's see with other stocks how it has performed. So initially all the time when I do a test, I normally do the test on SPY and QQQ because those are the index ones. So generally, if any strategy, a trend following strategy works in SPY and QQQ, generally it tends to work on the stocks as well. So these are just the uh, high um, end stocks, the large cap stocks. So even if I look into the Indian stocks, um, I think the returns could be pretty good as well on that side. So there you go, this Reliance and Tata Consultancy there, HDFC. Um, so regardless of which country the stock is, whether it's a US-based company or a, a UK-based company or a, an Indian-based company, at the end of the day, uh, the returns will give or take, give you a pretty decent return. So don't try to backtest this on futures because the futures have a completely different settings because the values are like so small. Uh, so play around with this on your um, stocks. So that's why we are choosing um, long only strategy in this because futures, especially when you take futures of uh, currency pairs or commodities, there's a very good chance it can go down south as well. For example, the crude oil has gone down considerably uh, during the two years back. So uh, in that case, you have to create a long and short only, but the reason why I only did long only was because the target market was specifically on the stocks. 
So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Play around with these numbers. There's no uh, specific rule. If you want to download the codes, the code is in the description. So feel free to download whenever you want to. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this strategy and this backtesting. Uh, have a great day.